<laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so my name is Dash. I work for Snowflake. I'm on the DevRel team at Snowflake. First time at GitHub, so thank you, GitHub, for hosting me, and thank you all for being here today. I know it's raining. It's uh, not the best. I wish I could wear those, but I cannot. So today, it's all going to be about looking at a couple of applications that I've built using some of the technologies that I'm going to talk about. And there's no slides besides this one. This is the most important slide you will ever see today. Okay, I also need some followers, so please follow me. <laughs> All right, so before we look at the code, I'm gonna just show you the end result, and then we're gonna backtrack. Does this sound good? Yeah. All right, so this application allows you, or allows me to upload a photo, and it's gonna show what photo I've uploaded, and it's gonna tell us what kind of animal is in the photo. And then we'll talk about different technologies being used behind the scenes. So I'm gonna click on browse and I'll just pick one of the photos that I've downloaded from Google and we'll see what it's gonna come up with. Now, the technologies being used in here are so powerful Python. It's a Python API that allows you to write applications against your Snowflake account, right? So instead of using SQL, you can actually use Python to work with Snowflake, which is pretty awesome. So here we see this is the image I uploaded, and then uh, can you all see what the what the text is next to it? Or should I increase is that better? Okay, Egyptian Egyptian cat. Let's try another one, and then I'll, we'll talk about the technologies uh, as this thing is processing. Now, everything you see in here is using Python in some shape or form. Like I said, working with Snowflake, I'm using so powerful Python API. I'm using PyTorch pre-trained models to actually tell me what it's, um, it's displaying in terms of the image itself. And the processing about every single thing you see in the application is actually happening in Snowflake, not on the client. All right, so now let's look at the code behind this, okay? I'm gonna switch over to Visual Studio Code. Now, if you use Visual Studio Code and you also work with Snowflake, we have an amazing extension that you can use, um, download and install and use. And right from here, I can actually access my Snowflake account. So I can run queries. I can look at what data I have. I can browse all my objects in my uh, Snowflake database and what have you, all right? So that's besides the point, but extension is a pretty awesome thing to have. Here's the code. Should I make it bigger? Yeah. Yes? Okay. So up here you will see I've imported all the Python libraries that I'm gonna need, including Snowpark for Python, which is snowflake.snowpark. You can install this using either pip or conda. The other library I'm using here is Streamlit. Has anyone used Streamlit before? Amazing Python framework that allows you to write pretty cool web applications without knowing HTML or CSS. And with a few lines of code, you can have this application up and running pretty quickly. So up here, I'm setting the page header. Um, SD is Streamlit, um, alias for it. This is the header I'm setting. And then this is where I'm creating a session object to my Snowflake account using Snowpark for Python. I've uh, provided a connection JSON file. This is one way to connect to Snowflake using the APIs. Down here, SD file uploader is a streamlit API that allows me to upload the photo and then gives me the data in bytes. So once I get the data, I'm creating a, just a unique file name. I'm creating a pandas data frame. And this line right here, 55, is super important. That line alone allows me to write the data back into Snowflake with just a calling ride pandas, passing a data frame, and then um, what the actual data is within the data frame, okay? And the second parameter is the name of the table. Once the data is in Snowflake, I'm calling something called user-defined function. This is part of Snowflake Python API. What it does is you can write your custom code in Python and register that as a user-defined function in Snowflake so then you can call it from anywhere in Snowflake that you'd like, or even from outside applications. Of course, you have to have access to the object, the user-defined function, 
every object in Snowflake has um, R back on it. So as long as you have access to the function, you can call it from anywhere. The function I'm calling from here is image recognition underscore using uh, underscore bytes. This is the code that we're gonna look at next. And then down here is how I've basically uh, segregated different parts of the web page using something called container. It's like a canvas allows you to do columns and rows, things like that. So if you worked with some of the other web frameworks like foundation, uh, you probably know what I'm kind of get at here. So in the column, uh, the second column, the first column, I'm not displaying anything. I wanted everything centered. So second column, I'm displaying the image itself. And then the, the third column, which is the one on the right, is just displaying the label that this statement is returning back. So makes sense so far? Now we're gonna look at the Python code that's actually processing the image in Snowflake. For that, I'm gonna switch over to my Jupyter notebook to show you how actually I created the user defined function. Up here, you'll see I'm importing the same Snowpark library that I showed you, and then some other libraries I'm using to cache and things like that. Very similarly, I'm connecting to Snowflake using connection JSON file in this case. And um, this slide here kind of sheds some light on how these user-defined functions work. So I'm trying to go smaller so the whole thing displays. It's not actually working, I don't know why. But at the top, you will see uh, an example of a Python function. Let's just say it's called calculate distance. Now, as soon as you decorate that with add UDF decorator, that's gonna tell Snowflake that this is a Python function that needs to be registered in Snowflake and executed in Snowflake in a secure sandbox. So basically, what happens is it goes through an object serializer, it passes through Snowflake connector for Python for authentication, turns that into Python bytecode, and then that code runs securely in a sandbox in the isolated environment uh, in your account. So everything happens securely in your account in Snowflake. And then if there's any data frame operations, there's also SQL engine to process that stuff for you. Now this box on the, on the left for you guys, no, sorry, right. Um, this always happens no matter how many times I uh, present. Uh, Snowflake has partnered with Anaconda to provide thousands of packages out of the box that you can use in your user-defined functions and store procedures. Let me show you um, a list just to give you an idea of how many packages there are, thousands. Not only just packages, there's multiple versions of the same package and also multiple platforms, for example, different versions of Python itself, 3.9, 3.10, 311, what have you. In Snowflake, you can also look at all these packages by running this SQL. So if I run count star, where our language includes Python. So if you work with Snowflake or not, this is basically the default user interface that you use when you're working with Snowflake. It's called SnowSite. Um, sorry, so this thing did not run that. Again, always happens. So there's about 21,000 packages you have at your disposal out of the box that you can use in your user defined functions. Now let's go back to this. Now let's get, oh wow. Is that better? Yeah? Okay. So before we look at the actual code, uh, I wanna mention the, the PyTorch models that I'm using to process the images. It's basically a um, model, uh, PyTorch implementation of model net V3. So there's, there's this GitHub repo, right? Uh, that has these models uploaded that are uh, available for everyone to use under MIT license. It's not my repo, but it's, I'm really thankful that they provided these models that we can use out of the box without any issues. So these are the models I'm using. Now, how do you use these models in your function? Okay, that's what we're gonna look at next. So the way it works is every time you have a dependency that you want on your Python function, you can upload those dependencies on a Snowflake stage. 
And then from there on, you can access them in your user-defined function. So this, these three lines here are doing exactly that. So I have in my repo, so you also have access to this repository um, later on or now. All the model files are in here. So what I'm doing with these lines is I'm putting the three model files that I need onto my stage in Snowflake. Once I do that, all I have to do is say session.add import, and this is how I'm adding dependency that my Python function will depend on. That's how I can use them in my function. Add packages, sorry, add packages allows me to add any other Python packages uh, from the conduct channel that I have to use in my user defined function. Okay, once I do that, then here's some code that I've written to basically cache the labels, um, cache the model itself if the, uh, if the input is the same. I don't want to reprocess it. And let me scroll down here. This is the function that we looked at in the application that's being called um, to process the image. Input parameter is image bytes in string. This is what I'm storing when you upload an image. So that's the input to the function. And then from here, uh, I'm just trying to convert what's in bytes into uh, an image and then calling the model that I've already uploaded or added as a dependency to tell me what the label could be within that image. How's that so far? Good? Perhaps? No? Sorry. I like it when it's more interactive. Who's right-handed? Who's left-handed? I love it when everyone's involved. It's pretty cool. Okay, so I said you can actually write this application on your own, right? Now or even later. And you can ping me if you run into any issues. How you, do you do that is what I'm gonna show you next. So this is a quick start guide. So if you go to quickstarts.snowflake.com, you will find this quick start where you can follow each step and replicate this application within, within less than 30 minutes, I would say. Um, let me just go over what's covered. So I talked about Snowpark. Um, Snowpark is a, a way to interact with your Snowflake account using languages other than SQL. So we have libraries for Java, Python, and Scala. Today we're talking about Python, which is also my favorite. So the way it works, you have client libraries that you use in your applications. On the server side, there's a corresponding runtime that will process and execute whatever you provide basically from your, from your client. Streamlit, we already talked about it. PyTorch, I'm not an expert, but I'm really grateful for these contributors that have provided these pre-trained models for us to use. Um, who knows what OpenAI is in Dolly? <laughs> you never know, I, I don't like to assume so. Um, so in this application, there's also a second version of the application that will allow you to write a prompt and get an image in real time from OpenAI. And then the same Python function that I just showed you will tell you what's in the image, which is pretty cool. So that, if you will follow along this um, quick start guide, that part is optional because you acquire OpenAI account, OpenAI key, and things like that. I believe there's, um, at the time of writing, there were like 1800, sorry, not 1800, $18 worth of credit provided by OpenAI. I don't know what that amount is now. So um, just please uh, bear that in mind. Um, second step, just walks through everything um, that I've done in the application. Uh, step by step. So the first image that we, sorry, first application we just saw is uploading an image. The second application is basically image generated by OpenAI. The code is right there. There's also a link to a GitHub repo that I'll show you right now in, in just a couple of seconds. And I don't, I don't know if this was, this was clear, but in both applications, the processing is happening using the same user-defined function in Snowflake. So that's the beauty of creating these functions that you can use across sessions, across applications. In the next step, I have outlined the models that I'm using, pre-trained PyTorch models I'm using, link to their repo, and also a huge thank you uh, for the authors. And basically kind of 
just going through everything that I've kind of said, but in more, uh, more detail and step-by-step -step manner. Now, who's actually really excited to create this application on their own? You can be honest, it's okay. Wow, nice. That's awesome. 10, 10 points for you, 10 out of 10. Um, okay, so the GitHub repo, if you wanted to do this on your own, is um, not that, but this one right here. So it's all here. Uh, and we're at GitHub, so I was actually looking for my name on, on the screen to see if uh, one of my pushes is going to show up there. But then I didn't have enough time to wait. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Streamlit. Uh, again, it's a Python framework. Recently, we've announced a public preview of Streamlit and Snowflake. What that means is you can write these applications within Snowflake. So let me switch over to this tab. So you'll see that I'm within Snowflake in my account. There's an option on the left-hand side called Streamlit. I'm gonna click on here, and these are all the applications that I've built over time. I'm gonna click on one of these, and we'll see the application render in just a couple of seconds. I forgot my water somewhere. Okay. So this application is maybe about 100 lines, but the, the story behind this is you have a marketing team that wants to predict the revenue based on budget allocations that you may have, right? So up here, you'll see there's four sliders. These are features to a model. When I adjust these sliders, we'll see that the predicted revenue is either going up or down, right? And then the chart uh, reflects whatever is happening when you do these things uh, or interact with the application. Now, let me show you the code behind this. So this is the application. If you wanna look at the code, if you click on edit, so you'll see the code is right there on the left-hand side, right? I can also hide um, the preview of the application. And then here's the Python code that, that I've written to create this application. Now I talked about predicted uh, amount coming back. Using Snowpark, you can also train models in Snowflake and register them so that they are another object, just like a table in a database, okay? So that's what's happening here. But if you look at the actual code, it's, it's just Python code, um, Streamlit and Snowpark for Python. And the user-defined function that's giving us the predicted value is predict ROI. That's loading the model that I've trained using Snowpark and giving us the predicted um, revenue based on the sliders. So it's pretty cool. You can also share these applications with any of your team members, right? As long as they have a Snowflake account, they have the role to access the application, they can access this um, application. So let's say brand managers, and then you copy this link and share the link, that's it. So just imagine the uh, the, the ease of collaboration between teams that can happen without having to go through these processes. The, the designer could be sitting right next to you and saying, hey, I don't like the slider. Uh, let's change it to, so let's just take an example, how easy it is to also just modify the app. So let's just say they're not happy with these sliders. They want input boxes. So I can change this one thing right here. If I can type input, okay, run. And there you go, right? Now I can interact with these boxes instead of sliders. Cool, and then I can change it back. Just the power of collaboration. I forgot to mention early on that if there's quiet moments, that's your chance to clap. Uh, thank you, appreciate it.